WBSU Bullet on Nation Radio Streaming Worldwide From the 65 Certified You already know who it is Mother Mouth No Doubt We got the one The only The amazing 7th Streeter in the building Y'all Good Good oh. It's like a really, really great feeling too because my product manager, Courtney, actually graduated from Bowie State. And um, she loves it. She talks about this school all the time. And, you know, it just makes my heart happy. You know, um, I come from a family who just loves and believes in the tradition of HBCUs. And so just to be here and um, have an actual alum from your school who helps me run all of my projects, like, lets me know y'all, y'all breed some, some goodness here, you know? So it's nice. It was amazing. WBSU Bullet on Nation Radio Streaming Worldwide from the 65 Certified. You already know who it is. Mother the Mouth, no doubt. Project MC. And I got my girl, the Icy Girl. I mean, she took into the building with me. And I got my Mr. President. How yes, you feeling, sir. man? Hello. How y'all feeling, man? Listen, it's, good. it's a very exciting day. I know who we got in the building, right? You should know because she's sitting right next to you. <laughs> you right there. We got the one, the only, the amazing 7th Streeter in the building, y'all. That's good. That's That's good. good. Nice to see y'all. Nice to meet you all. Seven, how you feeling, yo? I feel amazing. I feel really, really good. It's hot outside. Yes. You know? Yes. Not too, too hot, but it's, you know, it's nice. You know, it's leg out weather, but you know, not sweatpants weather. It's nice. Hoochie, hoochie daddy <laughs> shorts weather? Hoochie, huh? hoochie, hoochie daddy shorts weather? You know, hoochie daddy shorts weather. <laughs> you know, weather, yeah. Yo, Seven pulled out the, the Escalade, yo. She had the Supreme, the <laughs> the shades on, hat turned back was the the twenty three. Y'all because the, the J's, I mean, had to rap. She's too yeah. fly. She's, She's too fly. fly. That's what we fly like her. Thank you very much. So how do you feel being at Bowie State? It feels amazing. You know, honestly, it's 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 um it's like a really really great feeling too because my product manager Courtney actually graduated from Bowie State okay, and we'll um, she oh, we'll loves dogs. it. She talks about this school all the time and. Mm -hmm. You know, it just makes my heart happy. You know, um, I come from a family who just loves and believes in the tradition of HBCUs. And mm. so mm -hmm. just to be here and um, have an actual alum from your school who helps me run all of my projects, like, lets me know y'all y'all breed some, some goodness here, you know? So it's nice. It's amazing to be here. We okay. want to get, well, yeah. I mean, go ahead, get straight to nitty gritty, right? Yeah. So since you've had quite the career. Right, Thank have you. been able to been blessed to do so much since 2012. I like it. Want to ask you, what's like some of the ups and downs that you would share with the listeners that you've been through your career, and how'd you persevere through it? Ooh, um, ups and downs. I think it's just, you know, the music industry and music and I, music in in particular. You, nothing is guaranteed. You mm. know what I mean? Mm. I always say, you know. You know, you eat what you kill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You eat what you kill. Um, you know, you have to have really tough skin. Um, you're going to get a lot of no's. Um, you know, people, you know, you may believe in something with all of your heart and someone will look you dead in your face and not believe. Or they'll look in your face and say they do believe and then turn around and be like, yeah, no, I don't believe. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like you really, um, when I think of the ups and downs within music, it's, it's really just it's a it's the dealing with people. Mm. You know what I mean? It's still you have to really really know who you are, and um, you know it, it's it's dealing with it's the people. It's the people. You know, people can be very tricky. You know. Okay, so before we yeah. dive <clears throat> too much into the music, I also hear at Bowie State University was really important to us is mental health, right? Yes. So what we do for every show is a mental health check-in. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're going to do mental capacity, okay. family, and then business. Okay. On a scale of one to ten, one being bad, I mean we got to check you in somewhere, or okay. ten being good. And so we're going to start off with okay. mental capacity. Oh, my mental capacity right now. It's actually, that's something that's been on my prayer list. I ask God to expand um, my, my capacity um, and my level to be able to take on because it's a stressful business, more stress. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my mental capacity right now, you said 10 being it's really good. Yeah, really good. It's, it's at a 10 right now. That's perfect. It that's really beautiful. is. It really is. That's, so, but that's on my prayer list. It hasn't always been at a 10. Yeah. Okay. So how's the family? Oh, my family's really good. The, I will say uh, right now we're probably at like a, we're at a 9. You know, we're at a nine right now. I'm at a nine right now. Uh, we have a couple of illnesses. My uh, my uncle is in ICU, uh, and so we're praying for him. And then another one of my family members, uh, we just got a, a, a test back that we're not 
too happy about. But um, I come from a praying family, so we're not worried Amen. about that. Um, so I'll say we're at a nine right now because, you know, you know, you're trying to knock us off, but we good. Okay, well, the Bulldog family got your family in prayers. Thank Absolutely. you. And how's the business side? Uh, it's business right now, I'll give that. I'll give it a nine. You know what I mean, I'll give it a nine. It's really, really good. Um, but, you know, this is the beginning of, of the next chapter. You know, new single, new record out, gearing up um, to l- release more new things from this next project. So, you know, we're at, a, we're at a nine because everybody on the team, we feel great. We're organized. Um, you know, spirits are high. And we're full of ideas and energy. So that, that's always good. So we're at a nine. Okay. So you talked a lot about stress, right? So what are mm-hmm. some of the ways positive ways that you deal with stress and anxiety mm, i um i started this thing in quarantine where um i would uh i wake up at 7 a.m i wake up and i encourage anybody to wake up at least an hour or if you can an hour or two before you know people are going to start hitting your phone and emails start coming in and you know life starts to life you know what i mean mm-hmm. so i started this thing in quarantine where i wake up at 7 a.m every morning i wake up I pray, I meditate, I watch a sermon, I write in my journal. If I'm, if there's a book that I'm into, I read, I'll, I'll read my book. I just have to give myself, me and God, our time before mm. I give myself to the world, essentially. So, um, yeah, and I have to, and I organize my my thoughts and I set my intentions and I always say I put myself in my peace bubble. You know, I stay in that. And once I'm done, I, I trap myself in my little peace bubble and then I take on the day, and um, it just. I just realized that it helped me, you know, to be able to just kind of take on whatever, like, you know, whatever gets thrown at me, you know. So I set, I call it setting my days. I set my days. Okay. Yeah. Hello, so Icy Girl, you. I know you got some, some, yeah. things, uh, some things you want to talk about. I do. So I want to know what your writing process looks like. Every mm-hmm. artist has, like, such a different writing process when it's time to, like, go to the studio or even, like, before they hit the studio, it's, like, an idea comes. So what is your writing process like? Oh, well, you know what? Right now, it's 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 evolved and changed and morphed over the years. Mm-hmm. Like, um, I'm I'm one. I don't like to I don't like to write down my my lyrics. It it throws me off. If I don't if I don't I want to I want to automatically transform transfer my my thoughts and my feelings the second that I have those headphones on my ear and I hear a beat that I like. I don't. I don't want to hear it ahead of time. I don't want to do any of that because it's just something about when you, the first time you hear a beat that you like, yo, that's cold. Right. You know what I mean? And I want to be able to sit right in front of a mic and lay down every melody that I have. I'm a melody person first. Right. So, you know, I'll you play me a beat, I'm going to sing a million melodies. Um, but my, my prep work um, recently, like probably over like the last... I mean, since since quarantine, honestly. Um, right now, if you go to my house, my living room is filled with whiteboards. Mm. Like, it's like six whiteboards, and they all are for six different projects that I'm working on. Like, one is for a television project. One is for, you know, my next, um, my next album, my next project. One is for, you know, miscellaneous things. It's filled with producers and writers and or songs that may inspire me or sounds that may inspire me that I want a producer to use so that when, and I have a studio at my house, so when people come over to work and they want to know, so what you going, what's going on with you? How you feel? What's going on in your head? I said, oh, come to the living room. <laughs> you know, and we go, we sit in the living room and I, I even let them sometimes sit and like, you know, look at the boards and dissect them because they may see something out of you know that's come from my mind that I have overlooked or not even noticed so that's my process um like I said but I'm when it comes to strictly just writing I'm a melody person first I will my shout out to my engineer his name is JP I'll lay a million melodies um sometimes they'll uh, like maybe six or seven times out of ten there'll be a lot of words in the melody that I'm I'm singing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, my engineer knows me so well at this point, by the time I'm done laying all the melodies, he's already marked up the, the parts that he knows that I'll potentially like. Um, we'll put the verse, the B section, the hook, the post together melodically. Um, and then if there, and then I just, I sit back down and then I, I write through that. I don't physically write. I, I, 
just hear words and I, I sing the words. That's like amazing. So in the studio, right? Thank I know certain people have different vibes in the studio. What's your vibe? Do you like, to, is you and the engineer or do you like to have a whole crew of people with you, something to bounce mm -hmm. ideas off? Um, well, you know what? I will say this. I came up, you know, I wrote, uh, I started really, really writing with Chris, with Chris Brown. And um, I, I always say all the time it was the best training ground because in those sessions, you know, everybody want to come to a Chris Brown session. You know what mm -hmm, I mean? Right. So it's like a studio. Everybody will pop up. You know what I mean? People, people would leave the club and come to the studio. People will just randomly pop by. Sometimes it's just, you know, whoever. But um, I'm, I came up having to write in environments that it, they're loud. There's people talking in the back. Mm -hmm. There's people dancing. He might be dancing in the, in the mirror and whatever, like whatever. So um, it trained my brain to still be able to hear and focus through that so i really can honestly write in any environment we can all stand in here and yell and scream and shout and dance and right. y'all play me a track and give me them headphones i will tune all y'all out and mm. write a whole song like that. <laughs> you know I what i mean that. so sometimes it's like that um i do love collaborations i think you know for the most part they they have always been my favorite writing with other writers um just because you just you're not gonna think the same as I do, and right. vice versa. And I like that because I I'm I'm a big believer in hybrids. I love dope hybrids. You know, if you write predominantly country music and I write R and B and like you know hip hop, you know hooks and and things like that, we put that together. It's gonna be crazy, you know. So I um it it just it varies, but I like it all, you know. The question that everyone has on their mind right now. Mm -hmm. How many times did you get into a dance battle with Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Never, okay? I don't want that smoke. Quit playing. That's I don't think nobody want that smoke. Um, no, I mean, I've never, honestly, no, no dance battles with them. I mean, if we all just danced or if we were out, things like that, that's different. But no dance battles. Video shoots are video shoots, you know, but... No, I don't want to battle Chris Brown. Don't nobody want to see that. Come on, boy. yo, you got to challenge him. You, 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 hey, you got him. No, 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 no. Listen, don't nobody want that Chris Brown dance smoke in real life. Man, don't oh. duck it, Seven. You, <laughs> you, you can take it. But nah, so you have the, the album drop, right? Again, shout out to Junkin' Words, Sober Thoughts. Yeah. Love the album, mm. especially love the deluxe. Thank you. Love yes. the deluxe. Thank I want to ask you, when it comes to either side, right, the deluxe, the original, mm. what was probably your favorite song that you took part in creating right mm -hmm. so what was probably the the one that hits you the most when you listen to the entire projects Ooh, that's hard um a lot of times with artists especially a lot of times with artists the our favorites are not even singles we all know that that mm -hmm. story right um i have a couple of favorites um right off the bat and it's the reason why i started my album that way fall back is one of my favorite songs um, I wrote that record with this artist named Lavish. He signed the OVO. He's amazing. Um, and then it features an artist from New Orleans named Dominic Scott, who I met when I was there. Mm. Um, sh I was there shooting a television show, and I wanted to work at night after we were done shooting. I was like, yo, do y'all know any studios and any writers? I just want to work. And found a random engineer in New Orleans who told me about this random studio. And he said, well, my homeboy's a writer called up Dominic met Dominic for the first time we wrote a smash that night and then you know when it came time for the album it just worked out I'm like yo you want to do this feature and he did the feature and it was dope but fallback is one of my favorites um obviously taboo is like my baby mm -hmm. um it's dope. my baby baby yeah and I like it too because I love to flip old records you know um it's a flip of an Alexander O'Neill um record and I, I love it uh because it, it feels it feels nostalgic, but it feels new. You know, it feels old and, you know, warm, but it still feels like vibey and, you know, it's it's cool. So I love Taboo. Um, I have a lot of favorites, man. Like, <laughs> I really do. Um, I, have a, I love Change My Mind. You know what I mean? It's it's a little sexy. You know, I got to put a little sexy on the album. I love a little sexy record. For sure. And um, I just... Yeah, I, I, I really, I love that project very much. It was the first um, album of mine that I was able to, you know, to completely do by myself. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, no no A&Rs, no 
body telling me what songs need to or have to be on the project it was literally just me and my engineer jp who i'd, I'd say he's my engineer slash slash a and r because it was literally just me and him um and a lot of times he would remind me he's like hey you remember that idea you started he was like i think you should finish that and fallback actually happened to be one of those i had mm. fallback i had the verse and the hook done and um one day when lavish came to the studio I was like, you want to hear this idea? JP was like, you should play it for Lavish because we had just done a, another record, the song that he's on called Forever. Mm -hmm. And um, he was like, you should play that for him. We played it for Lavish. Lavish said, let me shoot at it. He wrote the, the verse right there, um, right there within within the hour, and um, it's one of my favorites. So, yeah. Man, shout out JP for putting JP, that through. JP, JP is the real MVP. Having a great engineer who has amazing ears and um, a really dope temperament and um, is gonna stay in there with you to sun up, sundown, and be invested is that's really the cheat code code mm -hmm. of the music industry. I promise you. You ask any artist, like if you had to just be you on an island and you needed to record, who you gonna take? They not gonna name the A and Rs. They not gonna name. They're gonna name their engineer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That engineer artist connection is is so so important. It Everything. can make or break anything for real. Everything. Do what you want to ask her. Oh no, I think I think T had something because she thought oh, she said yes. drunken words. Yes. I didn't, so, I didn't want to step on her toes with that. Oh, one. oh yeah, I, I didn't want to step on her. We gotta get to this one. That he brought up this album because <laughs> when I was listening to it, I was like, hmm. I wanted to ask you, like, mm -hmm. what was the last drunk text that you sent? And oh, wait, let me look at who did you send it to? <laughs> <laughs> because I was listening to this album trying not to do that. Not so I had to know what It's you real did. hard. Let me see. Let it's me so hard. The last drunk text. The last that was drunk text. I'm sure no names. Yikes. No names. No names. Please, no sure names. We would not want nobody to sue WBSU. <laughs> 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 Here at WBSU, we welcome everyone. Because <laughs> they do get sent. I'm not even going to hold you. I'm not going to hold We all guilty you. of it. What? We need to Matter not fact, be. To add to that, what okay. was the last drunk text, uh -huh. and then what bottle of liquor was it? Ooh, that that's a good something. question. Oh, it was, it was you know. It tequila. Was tequila. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, tequila. Know, tequila. <laughs> it was Tequila De Leon, owned by a black man, owned by a black man. Shout out Puff. Shout out, shout out Diddy. But it was, uh, it was definitely De Leon. And um, the last drunk text text that I have sent I don't know maybe I've been on my good girl you know cause I don't see no drunk text nah she's scrolling through past I'm the bad one she's not, she not trying to read them real quick nah I'm trying I'm, listen, I'm gonna keep it a whole buck with you let me see the last drunk text see these are all work texts I mean, you've been working. That's her work I phone. That's why. That's her work phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> That's her work phone. <laughs> she makes sure to put a work phone out. Listen, sure. listen. I mean, I can't find one off the top of my head. But um, the last drunk, I mean, my drunk text, it really just be a series of, you know, you'll find any reason to drunk text the person because that's the only time you give yourself any like an excuse to actually do it. So I think probably like my drunk texts are literally just like, you know, let it be... I don't know. Let's say if it's somebody's, it was somebody's birthday recently. Mm -hmm. And I was at home and I was chilling. I had me a little something in my system. And um, I haven't talked to him in a minute, but you know, I was like, oh, it's their birthday. Oh, this is a prime time <laughs> opportunity. <laughs> Happy birthday. How you been? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But it was chill. You know what I mean? It was chill. <laughs> it was chill. He hit me back and I'm like, okay, it worked. You know? See? The but birthday text is like the perfect way to slide back into text. the DM. First of all, any holiday text. Oh, my. You know what? Happy Groundhog's Day. I was just saying. <laughs> you know? But any, you know, any of them, they work. Okay. Yeah. You ever sent the the drunk text and then they ain't reply to it? Just left you on red. Absolutely. <laughs> and then I write a song about it. <laughs> <laughs> write a whole diss track. Oh, uh, this one I say it all the time. You know, I'm like, I say all the time. If you date me, just know that I'm I'm gonna write a song about you. But you get to determine what that song is about. Either yeah. it's gonna be the most beautiful love song in the world, or it's not. You know, so it's up to, it's up to them. Hate to be them. So you either gonna get the diss track, track or the love yeah. track. You can right. choose. Have you ever yeah. had someone like call you afterwards? Absolutely. Be like, what is this? <laughs> I, I, I had somebody because I had a couple store, two stories, two different exes actually. I had one that I wrote a song about him while he was sitting there because he produced it. Mm. <gasps> yeah, Ooh. it was crazy. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. If you know, you know. And then, he had, and then he had to come to the concert and watch me perform it, and it happens to be like a fan favorite so the mm. fans were like screaming and he oh. but we we had been friends from at that point but still he was like 
after he was like, you know how crazy it was to have to hear you and all your friends tell me I wasn't. Sh-. And I was just like, I was like, well, you know, well at least listen, at least we made great art out of it, you know. Right. And then uh, another one, um, I actually wrote. I wrote the song next while I was on, um, on like Facetime with my ex. Actually, I was in a session. Wow. And I wrote the song next while I was on FaceTime with him. And so, um, you know, I did a couple of interviews and talked about it. And he called me. He was like, hey, man, can you lighten up a little bit? I said, no. Period. Period. So <laughs> before we go yeah. in, before we jump into your new single, right? Yeah. I love to play this game. It's called Quick Draw McGraw, right? Okay, let's go. I'm going to ask you these questions, quick fire questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have three seconds to answer it. doesn't matter how long your answer is, but you only have three seconds to answer it, right? Okay. So we got to right. start it off, right? Guilty pleasures. Oh, what I think about it? No, like, what is your guilty like, pleasures? Wait. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my guilty pleasures, Oreo cookies. Mm. I'm obsessed with Oreos. They're original like, Oreo? Or huh? like origi- no, regular Oreos. Don't regular? play with me. Oh, okay. All the other sprinkles and, you know, <laughs> putting confetti on my Oreos. Don't do that. Yeah, he's an Oreo fanatic. Nah, he's yeah. not. How do you eat your Oreos? Regular. What? <laughs> you see? <laughs> Us, I know you not. Or wait, 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 wait. So, are oh, you the type to? Nah, I ain't doing all nah, that. <laughs> I ain't got time nah, for that. Nah, let me tell you. Um, and then we done. Nah, right. I'm gonna tell you the best way to eat your Oreos. I've been doing this since I was like 10 years old. So you get a bowl, right? Uh-huh. You stack your Oreos up one, two, three, four. Okay. Get another four. Stack them up one, two, three, four. Get another four. Stack them up one in a bowl. So you, I do like you playing connect four. I swear to God, <laughs> I do like 16 at a time. So I stack like 16 up at a time. Put them in a bowl. Pour the milk on top, and just eat them with a spoon. So you eating like cereal. Yo, I promise you. Once but they got actual Oreo cereal. Yeah, she was but eating the, Oreo but the cereal. Oreo cereal don't taste nah, like real <laughs> Oreos. I'm trying to tell you, it's the best way to eat your Oreos. You My try one time. It. Try it. Tag me. I guarantee you. What kind of what kind of milk are you using? Well, see, I have to drink lactate milk. Uh, so I have to the, drink the blue carton. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I gotta yeah. drink lactate milk. I know. Milk. You, I know. You, you, you feel yeah. me? You know. Yeah. But yeah, try it. Trust me. All okay. y'all try it. It's good. I'm right. Three things you can't live without. Three things I can't live without. Ooh, a uh, journal, mm. um, a studio, mm-hmm. and I mean I would say family, but that's that's a given. So I'll say Facetime. Okay. Mm. One celebrity you would like to have met if when they was alive. Aaliyah. Okay. Mm. Uh, biggest fear. Um, not living up to my full potential. Most mm. prized, most prized possession. Most prized possession. Oh, that's a good one. Um, you said three seconds, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, crap. <laughs> um, my most prized possession? My vocal cords. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, what have you done that you're most proud of? Um, made it from Haines City to L.A. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we're going to end it with this one. Right. Which mm-hmm. one was it? Which one was it? It was the chapter in your life. This Chap- chapter. This chapter in my life? What about it? They were like, what is this chapter in your life what called? What is this chapter in my life? Mm. This chapter in my life, um, I mean, I don't really know how to really, really put it, but I, for the lack of a better phrase or lack of better words, um, this chapter of my life is called like blinders Mm. like blind like tunnel vision like blinders like i could care less what anybody is doing to the left and the right of me like i i i have a vision that god has given me of exactly where it is that i am headed and nothing and nobody's gonna knock me off that no savvy mirrors no savvy (laughs) at all we got that. I want to get to to this segment right here right. because right. again, Drunk and Wear Sober Thoughts, ladies and gentlemen, is out right now. Mm-hmm. The video for Twenty Three is also out right now. Go stream that. Go watch yes. that. But it's some lyrics on this album, man, that we gotta get to. Talk to me. And you know I mean, we gotta pull it out. So the first thing, right? Okay. One of my favorite songs from it is Guilty. Yeah. And and the lyrics say, and I quote, <laughs> and I quote, Uh-oh. I quote. know we in love, yeah, but not with each other. Uh-huh. No. Mm-hmm. And we don't mind, well, cause you're still mine. Amen. Seven, what mm. we doing here? <laughs> um, we we got a sneaky link. Uh oh, that's what that is. Hey, now. Okay. It's just what it is. Listen here, first of all, we're all single until we're married. Let's start. Mm, period. Don't get me started. We all single until we're married. <laughs> ladies, ladies, you're single until he you're married. All right. right. We're single until he's married. Until we're married. But um, yeah, that's it's called a sneaky link. Like you know, 
things happen. I will say this. I have never cheated. I'm not a cheater. I don't do that. But, you know, if you're like, you know, talking to somebody and then somebody else come in the picture and you're like, oh, I like this somebody too. And, you know, oh, hey, somebody, it's nice to see you, but I'm going to go over here to hang out with my girlfriend. But you're really going out there over there to hang out with somebody else. Mm. You know, it's kind of one of those. It's like, it happens. Seven is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> seven. That told me seven is dangerous. All right, next one. You got from Nasty Girl, uh-huh. right? Uh-huh. Treat me nicely, mm-hmm. buy me bracelets, mm-hmm. I will be your nasty girl. Yeah. Everybody, let's just stop there. Yeah. The next joint, it says, I need bins and planes with my equal, because I'm going to ride that, can't say that on the air, see, like nah. I need you. We just want to know, are you a material well, girl? Well, see, this is the thing. <laughs> the, second part, the second part, we got to ask Bia, because those are Bia's lyrics. Uh-uh. The first part, the first part, um, am I a material girl? Uh, I wouldn't really consider myself a material girl. Um, I just, I like, I can't cuss on you, can I? Nah. No, I can't, sorry. Nah, um, <laughs> I just like, I just like, I like fly things. You mm. know what I mean? But fly things for me, is it's really, and I know people say, oh, it's not about the money. No, I really mean that. Like, I will go to a, a like a thrift store and find a whole fit and go walk a red carpet. Mm. Like, you know what I mean? So, you know, buy me bracelets. You can buy me a fire a fire bracelet from a from a you know thrift store consignment shop that's vintage and old looking that's fire like if it's fire i'm a rocket so it's just more so like you know i um it's more so like under understand my style Mm. understand what that is like if you if you treat me nicely understand how i vibe how i like to rock my things and every now and then you're like oh yeah i've got this for you i'm like what you want for dinner? Right. And, you know, what you want me to cook you? Well, to that point, yeah. um, so what would you say are your love languages then? How do you like best mm-hmm. to receive love? Where's affirmation, gift giving, acts of service? What's my, best for you? My love language um, mm-hmm. is is I'm very affectionate. So I, I, I you know, a, a rub on the back, you know, a hug. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Especially, I think maybe too, because I have to spend so much time being gone. Mm. So when I am around and I'm with the person that I'm with, like, you can't, I can't keep my hands off you. And I would like it if it were the same. You know what I mean? Like, I'm that type. Um, words, words are important. Um, actions mean more. Mm. Um, you know, time spent when we can. Um, even if it's only an, an hour, I need your full attention for that entire for that hour mm. like not 59 minutes no i need the whole hour like so um you know yeah i'm very affectionate um yeah those things okay so i know your time is tight right so i want to definitely talk about the music video that you just dropped first yeah. of all love the video thank you i'm a bmw driver so you know hey, i was liking it. i was now. liking it. i was with that i was with that right <laughs> So I want to talk about some of the concepts that you put into your music video, 23. Because yeah. I see some aesthetics, like you got some athletic stuff going on, you're on the yeah. basketball court. Yeah. Also, so you got uh, like a 90s type of aesthetic as well. Yeah. I mean, um, well, 23, I mean, when we think about 23, who do we think of? When Jordan. We think? Michael Jordan. Also, yeah. you had the Jordans on in the you video. You feel me? And when we think about Jordan, what do we think about? Like, what do we associate him with? We associate him with... Hip-hop. With gra- and with greatness. 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 You know what I mean? With greatness, um, with, and he, you know, his influence you know culture you know things that we kind of we all no matter what era we're from you know once jordan became jordan every era after him we all connect you know to the same things you know it was the way that he influenced the culture how we um we all rock jays and stuff now you know what i mean so i wanted that to definitely be um reflected in the video because the name of the song is 23 and i give a reference to him um, in the record. So we um, shout out to Jordan Brand because they laced me and all my dancers. They sent us a bunch of apparel oh, that's lit. for, the, that's for the video. So um, yeah, I wanted wanted that to be reflected. Um, you know, the, the, the 90s flair that just, you know what I mean? Like, you know, y'all are babies, okay? So I actually, <laughs> I actually was, I was alive and, and, and thriving in the 90s a little bit, um, tiny bit. Um, so I, I remember what that felt like watching my dad and all of his homeboys get around the TV to watch Jordan play in real time. Like, mm. I remember what that felt like. So I'm like that in that era. And I remember, I remember how the women were dressing at that time and like how the clothes, how the clothes were fitting in, you know. So I really wanted to, um, I wanted to have that. And then I just really wanted the video to be at the same time just 
chill and relatable. You know what I mean? I wanted the girls to feel like they could put them outfits together. All you need is a bikini top and some some basketball shorts. You know, that's how we be in the summer anyway. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, you know, we love stealing our, our boyfriend's basketball shorts. <laughs> You know, so and never that's, give them back. And, and never, give, never them give them back. You're never gonna get it back. Never gonna get them back. Look at this. She know. So I wanted, I wanted that, and um, you know, the the, you know, there's, it's it was a, just it was a fun video to shoot. It was hot. It, it was literally that was real sweat. You know? I, that was real sweat. You hear me? That was real work out there. It was probably I'm not gonna hold you. It was probably 100 degrees that day. Wow. Because mm. it's been right now in LA, it's 119 degrees. Good God. I see yeah. why you left. Yeah, that's exactly why I left. Exactly. Well, but, nah. We definitely appreciate you seven for no, stopping by. And listen, to close out, what better way than she just talked about it? Yeah. Let's go ahead and give the people 23 out right now yeah, on yeah. all social platforms. Yeah. And then while you listen to 23, go ahead and play the rest of the album, Drunken yeah. Words, Sober Thoughts. Let's yeah. get to it. Thank you.